Hey, how are you doing? Welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be looking at substituting to solve simultaneous equations. Okay, so sub to solve, solve uh, <laughs> sim equations. All right, I've done other videos on solving simultaneous equations, specifically by cancelling. Um, I think cancelling is slightly easier, but to tell you the truth, I used this way the whole way through high school. I didn't learn, I never used the cancelling way until I actually became a teacher myself. Um, and this way is just as powerful, except you have to be quite good at algebra to be able to handle this um, in certain cases. Okay, sometimes the substitution gets a little bit ugly. Let's take a look at an example, e.g. Um, 4y plus 8x equals 12 and 3y minus 5x equals 20. Now, if you've watched the other video on how to solve by cancelling, the first thing that you would look at is you would say, okay, do I have any coefficients that are actually the same? And I look at this, 4 and 3, no, 8 and 5, no. Okay, so not the same. So I would have to at least have to modify something. Well, can I just modify one to make it look like the other? Like, can I double this to make it look like that? No. Or can I double or halve this or triple this to make it look like that? No. So the most I would have to do is, if I wanted to use the modifying and cancelling thing, I'd have to modify both of them. Are you with me? Okay. So in this case, although it would probably be easier to modify both of them, I'm going to do the substitution one, okay? Just because I like the substitution. So here's the thing. I'm going to get x in, uh, y in terms of x, okay? So I look at this and I say, okay, well, which one has factors that go nicely into each other? Well, this one, 3y, 5y, 3, 5, 20. No, it doesn't go nice because 3 doesn't go nicely into 20. But 4, 8, 12, oh, everything has 4 in there. Okay, so let's get this in terms of each other. Okay, so I'm going to use, let's call this equation 1. So I'm going to look at equation 1. And I've got 4y plus 8x equals 12. Okay, for the really astute of you, you'll say, oh, but there's a common factor. Yeah, there is. I'm going to do it two different ways. I'm going to do it a different way. Instead of taking a common factor, I'm going to first get it alone and then divide by that 4. Okay, so in order to get y alone, now this is changing the subject of, of the formula. Okay. So changing the subject of the formula, I'm going to use bid mass backwards, bid mass backwards, and opposite to other side. Okay. So, first thing to get rid of is I'm going to get rid of the plus 8x. I reverse bid mass, get rid of additional subtraction first. So I've got 4y, let's just leave it there, equals opposite plus 8x is minus 8x, 12 minus 8x. Okay? Now I can get rid of the divide by, the times by 4. So times by 4 is divide by 4. y equals 12 minus 8x, all divided by 4. Now I'm showing you this way because if you had a situation where actually nothing goes into anything else, all right, then what I would do is I would then still do it this way, still have this method, and I just would end up with a horrible fraction over here. So that's the one way this can get ugly. Now if we tidy this up, 12 divided by 4 is, is 3. And 8 divided by 4 is minus 2x. All right. So that's what y equals. Um, 3 minus 2x. Let's just type it the sub, Mr. Rish. Come on. You have to work me to be here. 3 minus 2x. Okay. So that's my first step. Now my second step is I've got what y is. I can take this and I can put it into my other equation. Please don't put it back into the same equation you used to get y. Otherwise, you'll just be going in a circle. You won't work out y from that. You'll probably get a tautology like 12 equals 12 or 0 equals 0 or something like that. Okay? So take it and you put it back into the other equation. Okay? So let's call this equation 2. Equation 2. So I'm going to put it back into equation 2 and then solve for x. Okay. Um, let me just make some space here. You followed what I did there. So I've got y equals 3 minus 2x. I'm going to put it back into equation 2. So here's equation 2. I've got 3, well, y is 3 minus 2x. So instead of writing y, I'm just going to write 3 minus 2x. Okay. Minus 5x equals 20. Now the reason why I do this is so that in this equation now, I've only got one variable, x. I don't have two variables, only one variable. Okay, so now I can work this out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6x. Minus 5x equals 20. All right? Uh, opposite of plus 9. Well, let's tie this up first. I've got 9 minus 6x minus 5x is minus 11x equals 20. Okay? Opposite of plus 9 is 
minus 9, so minus 11x equals 20 minus 9 is 11. Everyone with me? I'll jump to skip there. So x equals 11 divided by negative 11 is negative 1. Okay, I skipped up two working lines there, but if you if you have an issue with that, just go listen to what I was saying again and write them in. Okay, so that's what x is. Well, now I need to work out what y is, okay? You could put it back into this one, you could put it back into this one, but to tell you the truth, the easiest one to put it back into is that one, because I just have to substitute there and work it out, and I have y. So I'm going to go into the red equation, y equals 3 minus 2 times by minus 1. Alrighty? Minus 1. Okay, and that's it. And we just have to work it out. So y equals 2 times negative 1, or oh, sorry, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. 3 and positive 2 is 5. So y equals 5, x equals negative 1. Okay. Um, it's... Do you see what I mean when I say that it's slightly trickier with the algebra? It's slightly trickier than the cancelling. Okay? The cancelling I would always go to first. All right. In fact, uh, in year 8 when we're doing simultaneous equations, or year 9 when we're doing simultaneous equations, I tell my kids I need to do the cancelling. Okay? It's just when you start to get into more complicated things, more challenging things, maybe the extension of year 9, that I would suggest maybe start looking at the substitution. The reason why this is useful is when the coefficients don't match nicely, or when you're dealing with quadratic and linear. If this was quadratic and this was linear, I'd have to do the substitution. You can't use the cancelling method for quadratic and linear. It doesn't work. Alrighty, okay. So, there it is. Go watch it again. I went quite fast for that. Alright, but you can use it. You don't really need it until maybe you get to quadratic and linear, but it's up to you. Okay, remember, I'm here for you.